All right, here's a term that most of you would have seen before. 2 to the power of 3. What does this mean? Most of you would probably say that 2 is multiplying itself 3 times. Based on that understanding, I would say 2 is going to multiply itself 3 times. Immediately, you can already see what's wrong with this definition. If you want to do well in maths, you have to understand each concept the right way. So today I'm going to give you the right definition for powers, so that it will make more sense when we look at index laws in a future video. Let's start with this, the letter A. The A could represent a number of any sort, but there is only one A, so we can write it as 1A. We could also describe this as 1 times A, since we only see it one time. So you can either describe it as a whole quantity, or as a multiplication of two things. These things are known as factors. In fact, anything that multiplies is considered a factor. So for example, if I had 2 times 3 times 5, all of these are factors. If it was 2 plus 3 times 5, this is an additive. But these two are factors. So let's just say I put in another factor of a here. This is the same as saying 1 times a times a, which means 1 is multiplying a twice. So we could summarize both of these into the same thing. We can say 1a squared. So while the a represents some sort of factor that's multiplying 1, 2 represents a quantity, a quantity of factors that you're using to multiply 1. Let's look at a few examples to illustrate this. 2 to the power of 3, keeping in mind there's only a 1 multiplying this out here, so this is the same as saying 1 times 2, 3 times. So you can say it's 1 times 3 factors of 2 which equals to 8. And what about this one, 3 to the power of 5? This means 1 is going to multiply 3 5 times. So there will be 5 factors of 3 written out here. You have to write it 5 times. And just to change things up a little bit, if I had a 2 multiplying 3 to the power of 5, then this would be 2 times 5 factors of 3. If 2 to the power of 3 multiplied 2 to the power of 2, this would indicate there are 3 factors of 2 multiplying by 1, and there are 2 factors of 2 multiplying by 1 as well, and they're multiplying each other. And the 1s are basically the same thing, so you're essentially taking 1 and multiplying 2 5 times. There's a few more things I wanted to address here. So let's have a look at those special cases now. Here we have 2 to the power of 0. Keeping in mind that there is still a 1 in front of this, because there's 1 times of all this here, that means there's 1 multiplying a certain number of factors of 2. But it's a 0, which means you're not multiplying any factors of 2. We could say 2 times, 2 times, you know, how many factors there are, but there aren't any here. And so the answer really is just 1. And since the 1 over here is technically optional to display, we could simply say it as 2 to the power of 0 is 1, because 1 is not multiplying any number of 2s. And this works across the board. You can do this for anything. 100 to the power of 0 is the same as still just saying 1, because you're not multiplying any 100s. Or 5.376 all to the power of 0, that's still just 1 because you're not multiplying any f number of factors for this. Because remember, the power represents a quantity of factors. You're not multiplying any of them here, so it's just 1. And just to address the obvious special case, 2 to the power of 1 will just be 1 times 2 once. Or 5 to the power of 1, that's the same thing, 1 times 5 only once. So these answers are the same as just not showing the 1 there. So 1s tend to be invisible, even as a power. The final case we're going to look at is negative powers. 2 to the power of negative 3. To understand how this negative works, we need to know what negatives mean. Negative basically means opposite. It doesn't mean minus. Let's be clear on this. If you had 3 plus 5, this means you take 3 and add 5 to it. 
3 minus 5. The minus is actually a negative. It just means do the opposite of whatever plus does. And so you take away in this context. But in the context of powers, because if you recall, 2 to the power of 3 is 1 times 2, 3 times. The operation involved was multiplication. So in the case of negative 3, it means divide. So 1 will divide 2 3 times. Here's another example, 3 to the power of negative 2. This would mean you take 1, divide by 3, just 2 times, because 2 is still the quantity of factors that you need to operate on. And so there's two factors of 3 you're dividing by, which can be rewritten as 1 divided by 3 2 times. And so that just simplifies to 1 and 9. Another way to write that is to say 1 divided by 3 twice. The confusing thing about indices is that there's multiple ways to describe all of this stuff. But I hope my definition of powers and factors has helped you guys make a bit more sense of this and enabled you to understand your index laws better in the future. Basically, if you have something like a to the power of n, the a is supposed to be a factor, while m is supposed to be a quantity. Officially, a factor is known as a base, and a quantity is known as an index. So I hope you guys found this helpful. If you did, please hit that like button. Let me know what you think down in the comments below. And don't forget to click the subscribe button and ring the bell so that you get notified about the next video. Thanks so much for watching, guys. Have a good one, and I'll see you next time.